Hardware Components Used in Communication Systems, Part 3, Modems, Network Interface Cards, Wireless Access Points. Now firstly we're going to take a look at modems and what a modem is essentially used for is to transmit digital signals which are created in how data exists within a computerized systems into analog signals which is how uh, signals used to be transmitted over wide area networks because the actual mediums were analog mediums okay they needed to be as basically electrical currents traveling down these wires okay and that's because of the old telecommunications network that existed long before digital computers were inside people's homes so essentially we need to understand what the word modem stands for and it stands for modulate which is the mo and demodulate the dem so modem modulate and demodulate Modulation is the transformation of the digital signal into analog, and that's what happens when the data is transformed from the computer, okay, so that it can be transmitted down analog mediums. And then demodulation is the reverse. A computer receives an analog signal, okay, from the telecommunications network. It demodulates the signal and puts it back to digital so that it can be read on the receiver's computer, okay, at the destination. So let's have a look at how this might look graphically. So here is my modem, and look, they weren't really interesting looking objects, okay? They had a number of lights, they made some really funky sounds when you first used to turn them on, okay? The first step in it is modulation. So what that means is my computer's got a digital signal, the data is in digital format, it transforms that digital format, okay? It modulates it into analog, okay? So that it can be transferred down the telecommunications network. Okay, which uses those analog wires and analog mediums as an electrical current. At the receiver's end then, the actual system will then receive those analog signals, okay, and it has to demodulate, and this is the process of demodulation. So here comes the analog signal, okay, to the receiver, okay, and then what it has to be done is it gets demodulated back into a digital signal so that the destination system, which is a computer once again that only reads digital, okay, can read this digital signal and read the actual data in its digital format. Okay, so early modems were a necessity for dial-up internet connections, okay, which are in the households. You might be able to ask your parents about it, if you're as old as me, you remember them. They used to have this really distinct loud noises when you used to connect to the internet, okay, and when you used them, the phone line was out because it used those phone lines for the sending of data down those analog mediums, okay, and basically you couldn't use the phone or anything in order to maintain your internet connection. It was purely for the internet, okay, and you could hear if you picked up the phone the actual signals being going down those wires, okay. So understand the importance of the modem, but essentially it's not a central connecting device like a hub switch or router. It's just used to modulate and demodulate analog and digital signals and vice versa so that basically the computer can read digital signals and the mediums for transmitting data can uh, transmit analog signals, okay? Understand the purpose of each. Now, while we're on the topic of um, connectivity devices and all that, we'll have a look at two other ones as well, okay? The first one I want to point out is the network interface card. And what we've got to understand with the network interface card is it is the chipset that is inside a computer that allows it to interact with a network which actually connects to the motherboard inside a system and then once connected, grants network access to that actual device. Okay, in the past, they weren't always stock standard with a system. Uh, basically, you'd have to purchase them separately if they weren't with the system and slide it into one of the expansion slots on a motherboard in order to give network privileges to your device. Now, once again, earlier computers had this distinct chick set. It was existed on its own, okay? And the things that gave it away that it was the network interface card is that it would have an Ethernet port on it and you could connect to that Ethernet port, okay, your Ethernet cable, and that gave you network access. These days as well, a network interface card, or NIC in short form, also has a wireless chip on it, okay? Because a lot of network connections now are wireless, connecting to wireless routers, okay? So this is all things that are on the network interface card. Every system has some sort of network interface card within it so that it can interact and interface with networks, okay? So if it is going to be a physical connection, it's usually through Ethernet, and then if it's going to be a wireless network, it has a wireless chipset on it so that it can interact with wireless things. Okay, so it's important to understand that this is what's inside all your system, inside your laptop, inside your desktop, okay, so that it can interface with an actual network, okay? So it's what's on each device. The final thing we'll look at here as well is a wireless access point or a WAP. 
Okay, and these are the actual devices set up when you go to those hotspots at shops, at restaurants, you know, or you just go somewhere to do some work, such as at the library. Okay, they have a wireless access point, and essentially it's a router. It's a router that allows you to connect to it, okay, but usually for a wider uh, local area network. Okay, so many people can just walk into that actual geographical site and then use the internet or the network available at that site. It's more of an unrestricted network, okay, in that we do want customers and the public coming in and actually using the network available through this router. And this has actually become a marketing point for a lot of businesses, such as McDonald's. They, You go there and they want you to go there, use their internet, and then sit down there all day and buy their coffee, eat their chips and all that. And the internet will keep you there while you're doing your work because you're more likely going to buy their products because you're on their site, okay? It's right there for you, okay? It's convenience for the actual customer, but it also suits McDonald's as well because it keeps their customer in the store and buying their products, okay? So I hope you understand as well these other two uh, elements related to networking as well. The fact that all systems need to have a network interface card inside them in order to interact with networks, whether it be through physical Ethernet or through wireless um, data transmissions, and then wireless access points, making the internet and networks available on site in different geographical locations to the public, to customers, okay, just by them walking in and logging on to their actual networks.